morning, everyone. It's Melissa, the owner of Nolte. I want to welcome everyone here this morning and thank you for joining our live event here today. I actually have a special guest with us, one of our new ambassadors, Brenna. Welcome. Thank Hi. you. Brenna is, we'll have Brenna share a little bit about herself here in a few minutes. Uh, she joined us this year as an ambassador and she would love to show, she's going to show us some tips and tricks today and give you some information on a few items. Uh, the other thing as we're going through the discussion today or the live event, feel free to put any questions you have in the chat. Melody, that's also on the other side of the camera, has recently joined us as our administrator, and she has been a great asset to Nolte. She's there. You might have already spoken with her on the phone. You might have uh, ran into her at Paducah. She was helping out in our Paducah booth and helping in the pattern man and the notions and all that good stuff. But she's the voice now that you are hearing when you call into Nolte. So Melody, if you want to say hi to everyone. Hello. <laughs> you might see her on video uh, throughout the morning as well. And she will be uh, letting us know if you have chat questions. And like I said, feel free to, this is your time to ask any questions about the various items that we're going to be going over because we do have a full, a full uh, morning here, a full hour, I should say, of various topics. So we're going to start with, I'm going to have Brenna introduce herself, and then we'll go into the topics. We're going to do some live demonstrations on stippling and feathers, and then we'll show you some of the new features um, that she'll be able to demonstrate on our new Alara. So it will be exciting to see our new machine, again, that I introduced a few weeks ago. And wanted to be able to show that new machine to you all and to see how easy it is to do some free motion quilting on the machine. As well as we'll be going over some information on the open house that is coming up in July. And we'll end with some FAQs at the end of the event. So with that, I'm going to turn it over. I'll let Brenna tell you a few minutes or a few things about herself. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you, Melissa, for having me. So my name is Brenna Good. I have been quilting and piecing. I think I started when my daughter was born, so that'd be 18 years ago. And I bought in 2017 a Nolting 24 Pro. It was refurbished at the time, so it's probably 15 to 18 years old now. Um, so I said I've been doing long arming since about 2017. I'm customers. You can find me out on Good Day Quilts on Instagram. Um, I do not have automation on my machine. Everything I do is free motion, and I bet I do do a lot of ruler and custom work, and it's a wonderful machine. So I am excited to be a new ambassador, and, and please feel free to, to shoot me any questions you have. Thanks, Brenna. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. She's going to do two different free motion things and demos today, one on stippling and one on feathers. So I'm going to let Brenna take over. Okay, so as Melissa said, we're going to talk a little bit about stippling and a little bit about feathers. So the stippling, some of you may be old pros at this, but I do know and I've talked to a lot of other people that when they first start, maybe they do a lot of edge to edge pantographs and just doing free motion kind of scares them. So stippling is one of those really basic stitches, really basic keys when you're first getting started on your lawn. Like I said, I have a 24 Pro, so this is one of the first times that I've gotten to play with the Alara. I've played with them a little bit. The motion on these is just beautiful. So if you're just starting out and you're just trying to kind of teach yourself stippling, it's one of those things that everybody thinks should be really easy. And when you start to do it, it's really easy to quilt yourself into a corner. So if you have not seen the Alara before, it's got a nice small screen on the front here. So if you touch stitch, you can see the four stitch modes. We've got regulated, manual, cruise, and based. So I've got it in regulated mode for now. And when you first start out, if you're brand new, and if you're trying to kind of learn stippling, basically what, the easiest thing to do is just kind of go up and down. Because stippling is just kind of a long series of little fingers. And so just go up and down. And I did an entire baby quilt in nothing but this when I was first starting out. So then you can start kind of going side to side. And just different keeping those little fingers. One of the other things to think about that is kind of a challenge when you first do it is, is the scale. How big and how little are your stipples? This is kind of a small to medium one, I think. I kind of I think of it in terms of coins. So this is like 
maybe dime to nickel size quilting. So I try to keep these loops relatively consistently sized. So then you just start switching the direction of your loop. So this one's going to go up, this one's going to go down, make this kind of bean shape as you go around. And again, I'm trying to keep all of those loops relatively the same size. Because I know when I first started, I'd start off this size and then they'd, as I get across the quilt, they get littler and littler. And then I'd get across the quilt and they'd get bigger. So work on just keeping those stitches, those loops, the same size. One thing to also think about, and different people do this different ways, so I'm certainly not going to say there's a right or a wrong way, but is the path you take across the quilt. What I tend to do to, to avoid quilting myself into a corner is, is I kind of go across, I do like almost little rectangles. So here I've got kind of a little rectangle, and now I'm going to go back. And if we say this is the edge of the quilt, then I'm going to go back. And again, just kind of these little fingers and get a couple of different shapes that work for you. So these are just kind of leaving I fill in the space there. And all of these little fingers kind of go in every which direction. And I'm keeping everything that's about that dime size. And this is on stitch regulated mode. So I haven't had a ton of a chance, but if we switch to cruise mode here, it's just kind of a little smoother, especially with the small stitch. So it kind of keeps going. And one of the places where, and see, now I'm doing my rectangle, so I do this rectangle. And you can see on cruise, I stopped, so I broke a thread, that's my fault. So you can see on cruise mode, when you slow down, it doesn't necessarily stop, it keeps stitching and that helps going in and out of corners. I'm not used to it yet, so I broke a thread and that's entirely my fault, not the machines. So we'll get started with the bobbin again here. But the cruise mode is really nice and I'll do a little micro stippling here. So for those of you who've gone, who do, like the really small stitching, the cruise mode makes this much easier to do and you don't get those little peaks that you can get if you try to do this in manual mode. So if I try to do micro stippling on my pro, I almost always do it in manual mode. But on here on the cruise mode, it's just so lovely and smooth. And again, you can kind of see focusing on scale. So on this micro stippling, I'm trying to make all of those little fingers or maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch. And again, I'm kind of trying to do little rectangles so that I can always see where it's going and where I've been. And I don't get myself stitched into a corner. But the cruise mode for this micro stippling, this mini stippling, is just wonderful. It's it's a huge, huge upgrade, and it's just a joy to do this kind of mini stipplings like this on here. So again, you can kind of see just trying to keep the the spacing and all these loops. So you're just kind of again making these little fingers, these little bean shapes and just keep the size of them consistent as you're going along. So it's just a quick, I said, if you've never done it or if you're newbie stippling, a few tips on, on how to at least try to get started. So if anybody got any questions, happy to do it. But again, the cruise mode makes that mini stippling just smooth as can be and keeps you from having, when you're doing the really tiny stitching on the pro, the older machines, like I said, mine's probably 15 to 20 years old. It it does kind of struggle going around those corners and this stitch regulator is such a dream. Yes. Margaret is wondering if the cruise mode is a new feature. Yes, the cruise mode is a new feature, Margaret. So when we 
uh, upgraded, or one way I should say we designed and, and engineered our electronics a couple years ago, the cruise mode is a mode that we have put on now most of our machines. So the Alera is the latest one that we just came out with, has the cruise mode, as well as the diamond and the flare. So all three of our machines now that we sell have the cruise mode on it. Yeah, so it is it is lovely to work with. There is, I said, I've only played with these a little bit. There is just a tiny bit of learning curve because it does keep stitching when you stop moving. So like I did, easy to break the thread if you're not paying attention. If you're paying attention, it's fine and, and works just like it should, so. But Brenda does have a good point. It was really quite easy for her to adjust going from a pro that she has to this machine um, because the machine itself, it's a Nolting. So the it's the same weight as the Pro or an IS2K or a standard speed control or a CLX, same weight. Um, so it's easy for her to adjust to go to this. It's just now learning the new different buttons mm -hmm. and how that regulator reacts. Connie is wondering if the cruise mode is in regulated or non-regulated. So Connie, it's a combination of both. So what it really helps with is as you're going in and out of those corners or as you're, as Brennan was doing very small work here, that needle keeps going. Whereas you regulate, your machine is kind of shutting down and then restarting. And on on our previous stitch regulators that most of you can probably nod your head up and down, you might get those long stitches. Mm -hmm. And Brenna, you can probably attest for that if you're doing squares, if you're doing uh, big points, if you're trying to do stuff like this, it is harder to do. Um, these electronics, they're brand new. And so that cruise is going to be that combination. It turns the manual and, and regulate on and off. So you're still going to have consistent stitches as you're going through, but it's easier to come in and out of corners or to do the micro stippling like Brennan just showed you. Yeah, I've tried the pebbling on the diamond in the cruise mode. And again, where on the pro, when you're working with those really small diamonds, you'll get some of the long stitches or you'll get some of the pulled stitches when you're using cruise mode on, on said I haven't tried it on this, but I've tried it on the diamond and it was just lovely to do like the mini pebbles and, mm -hmm. and that kind of work. So if you're just learning feathers, like when I started learning feathers, so there's my, there's my spine that I've drawn out. The traditional way that a lot of us are taught is you've got the bump back. So you go and then you bump back and you come around and you go and you bump back. So your traditional bump back feathers, which are great and they look lovely, but when you're stitching, especially if you're using high contrast thread or if you're, you're going right along, it is really easy to not get exactly on the bump back or you go a little far. So one way that you can kind of play with your feathers and eliminate that travel stitching that you're doing there is to just start making your feathers a little more complex. So instead of bumping back, curl around to the inside and then meet here and then come around for your next feather. So curl around to the inside, come back, and then you've got your next feather. And you can vary these. So that was a point. Now we're going to go with a, a rounded. Now we're going to go with a pointy one. I'll do it a little bigger here so you can see. So come to a point or curve around, whatever your preference is. And come around. So now you've got kind of these fun, fancy feathers. And you've eliminated the backtrack at the same time. So it's a neat way to do it. And you can play and add things in as you go along here. So I got the curl in there. So I'm just going to come back here and I'm going to go and I'm going to do another little curl inside that feather. And then I'm going to come around to this feather and I'll do a round one this time and do there. And then I'll do a round one in here. So I'm filling in inside my feathers, kind of alternating designs. But this is a fun way to make your feathers just a little more fancy and get rid of the backtrack at the same time. So it's kind of a, a double benefit there. So I spend a lot of time with a sketchbook and a pencil drawing these over and over and over again, just to get used to the motion. Because there's a couple of things that, that are easy to kind of get caught on here, always coming to the inside when you're doing your feather here, if you're curving. So come around to the inside to meet the curve 
easy to get yourself turned around in there. Do you have any advice for, um, it seems like when you're doing a feather, one way is easier than the other? Honestly, I think it's just personal preference and it's practice. This is the way the bounce back is the way I, it works for my brain to try and do them. You know, some people teach you the heirloom feathers where you're making individual ones. And for me, even though I practice this one a lot, I can't get it to look quite as good personally. I know some people who hate this way and love this way. So put a piece of fabric on your machine, try both ways and see which way works better for your particular, your particular brain. And, and what I was actually, and that's, that's a great thing that you had just mentioned there. The other thing I was thinking though, if you want to come back with your feathers, oh. you know how some people, sometimes it's hard and you get easy to go one way, but it's hard to yeah. go your brain to go the other way. I, again, that's just practice. And that's, again, like I said, I spend a lot of time with sketchbooks and, and so I, I make it a point to practice them in all different directions. So I will practice my feathers going down and make sure that my that I can do them going down. Pat is wondering, does this machine work with the IntelliQuilter like her current machine? It sure does, Pat. Um, both the machines or the, the layer here can work with IntelliQuilter. It can work with the Quilt Imagine and it can work with the Cubot. So any of our current automation systems can automatically go from your current machine to the new Alera machine, as well as our other machines. They can also go on to the flare and the diamond as well. Can you, I'd like to have you demo one more time, like this one here, so people sure. can see that a little bit more. And the other question I'd have for you, as you're going from a sketchbook to the machine, do you typically um, draw your line so that kind of gives you some guidance as you're doing your feather? Uh, I have done both ways, and it really kind of depends on the effect that I'm going for. So if I have one where it's a little more traditional and I don't necessarily want the thread buildup, I will draw this spine with a chalk line or an invisible pen and, and use that. If I've got a little more modern quilt where the quilting is really the star and I may be using contrasting thread or it's it's a motif, then I will um, then I will draw the spine with thread because I'm really going for that thread buildup and I'm looking for that kind of drama as okay. you create the spine. So it, it's really a matter of personal preference and what's the look you're going for. So if I said this is just this will be my spine here. And you take that first, kind of take that first one, you're going to hook it around. Like normally that'd be your first open hook. You're going to meet that point there and then come back with your next feather. Up and around and in and bring them back. And again, if you want to add a little drama, we're going to come in here and add the same motif in our second feather and you can do different things inside the feathers like you can do a little butterfly antenna you can do just a straight shot up down up and down all sorts of different things and again if i'm going for the drama i will follow it back and build that thread up and i'm gonna put just some spikes in this one I'll do a little curly cue in that one. So it really depends on what, what the look is you're going for. But again, there is absolutely no substitution for just making this design over and over again. I've got entire sketchbooks full of feathers. Bring it around. Come back to that point right there where your bump back would be. And there you go. Connie is wondering, when the other side is stitched, do you go from the top down or start over from the bottom? Start back over here so the feathers are both going in the same direction. I will, I will usually just stitch back here, and that does add to the thread buildup. Um, I don't mind it that much. I know some people who will stitch it out clear to here and, and not do that. They don't want it. So they'll either break thread or they'll come back and do like an echo. Oh. and get back to the spine with an echo. 
to avoid the thread build, which is, you know, kind of a neat look, mm -hmm. to avoid the thread build up going back this way. So you can have basically as little or as much thread on that spine as you want, depending on the look you're going for. So there's there's some quilts I do when I'm working with, you know, really dramatic fabric and, and great, great thread where I'm trying to build that up. I'm I'm making it as, as dramatic as possible. And it's fun to example, use two layers of batting and then you build all that thread up. And then so you've got these puffy areas in here and the the really dramatic feather. But if I'm doing a traditional quilt, I will avoid thread buildup just so to try brings, and keep that low. That brings up a good point. So if you want to put extra batting in that area, mm -hmm. assuming your your frame, the commercial frame is very easy to be able to do that. Yeah. I will I will frequently use two layers of batting. Okay. And my machine has absolutely no problem doing that. So if I'm if I'm doing just the batting in an extra area, which is only something I've done once or twice, Again, very easy to do. So, especially if you're floating your top, very easy to add an extra layer of batting, just kind of right underneath where you want the size of that feather. Thank you. That that was a great demonstration sure. of some basic feathers that people can start. I think what you heard from Brenna too is to practice, 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 practice. practice. Get those sketchbooks out. Practice on sketching. You can sit on your couch watching TV at night and sketch away, and that really helps. Not just with feathers, but anything in general from mm -hmm. a free motion perspective and getting that eye, um, hand, uh, mind coordination, everything yep. working together. Yeah. So then I want to show you a little bit before we go into a couple more things. Um, as Brennan was pointing out, some of the things here we have on the layer up. If you didn't notice, we do have a new color that we came out with. It's called the Lavender Bliss. It's a very, very pretty lavender. It's kind of lavender slash white. There's a little bit of pink to it as well. You've noticed our new lettering here. These are going to be all our new lettering. A little bit more finesse to our lettering on all our machines. The Lara, the Diamond, and the Flare. And the Fun Quilter all have the same uh, uh, unique type lettering now. The name of the product along with Nolte underneath it. Um, anyways, the, the Lavender Bliss, that is going to be our our baseline color in all of our machines going forward now, unless you want something else, but this will be our baseline color. This will be the color that we have that we will have um, building machines and we'll be able to ship those out as our baseline, our baseline products. But like I said, we will still have all the rest of the colors that everyone enjoys to get or choose your color as well. Our stitches, we have the four stitch modes, as Brennan mentioned, most people are always familiar with the regulate and the manual the big difference between this and our previous stitch regulators is really the electronics they are much newer electronics and the brushless motor the brushless motor with this stitch regulator and this stitch regulator once again is nolting's proprietary stitch regulator so we build it we've designed it and working with the brushless motor makes a big difference in how that machine reacts and how it performs. And so the stitching is much more consistent. You're not going to see, um, it's much more consistent and much more enjoyable to use. So when you go to use it on your quilt, it's much more of an enjoyable experience as we're calling it the Nolting effect. And that effect is, is bring more joy to you as you're quilting your quilts for your loved ones or your businesses. Couple other things on the the mode. Let's say you're going and you're and you're using regulate. You can actually switch to manual or cruise as you're as you're quilting along. You do not need to stop by using the red button. You can actually change the modes as you're quilting. You can also change the modes of your stitch spacing as you're quilting with the third button here. So in reality, you do not even have to take your your hands off of your uh, off of your handles here as you're quilting along to change to any of the functions here on the front page. Here's your stitch pace. So if you're out running the motor, this will get very yellow and then red. It'll say, hey, slow down a little bit. Your performance will be better. You can rest in a needle up or down. That comes into handy as you're doing ruler work. We have a measuring tool on this machine. You can have X, Y diagonal. You can reset measurements. You can turn the measurements on or off. Your thumb buttons here, you have a single stitch and a needle up down. 
your change in your spacing or your speed for your third buttons, and on and off. Same in the back. So if you look at the back handles, we have the same functionality. So one of the things that we have um, continue to have in all our machines is the simplicity and the easy use of our machines, just like Fred started years and years ago. So his whole thing was let's make them simple, but great performers. And we've, we've kept that as we design new machines and new technology that we have that in the same process of our machines and how we build them. The, the body itself is around 55 pounds, just like the Pro, the IS2K, the 98, the standard speed, all those same bodies, they're all aluminum in our factory. The difference though, between like the layer and the diamond and then your Pro and your CLX and IS2K is that the insides are different. So we actually re-engineered the inside of our bodies of our machines um, for the brushless motor to fit into these machines and all the electronic stacks in the back of the machine. So if you notice, we have no additional back on the back of the machine. So it balances very, very well in this machine with the new electronics. Lighting wise, we have dimmable lighting here, which is different than the other commercial machines. The other commercial machines, you have one bar and it's not dimmable and it's not LED. So I have now dimmable lighting here, brings a lot of light and through your throat area. So you have all the throat lighting here. Setting wise, you can change and have the brightness on your on your display as well. You can change the different themes. Here it just gives you a reminder of all the control settings and what they mean. Gives you project counters. If you do do it for a business or if you like to keep track of your projects, it keeps track of your projects as well so that it will tell you when you should oil your machine. And oiling in your machine, there's four oil wicks, similar to all our other machines that we have out there. It's exactly the same, four oil wicks, you oil every eight hours. Maintenance-wise, this is where it talks about the oiling and your reminders. The nice thing about that, any of your collaborations or factory maintenance, we can do over the phone with you. So tech support is actually easier as well because we can have you do things um, directly onto your touchscreen that will impact the performance of your machine. Diagnostics is on here. So if any kind of air codes are being thrown, it'll show up here and we'd be able to do that over the phone as well. Um, laser light, just like all our commercial machines, we do have a laser light on the front and it plugs in down here, or we have a laser port in the back as well, just like your other commercial machines. Someone had mentioned about automation. The nice thing about our new machines is that we do have internal wiring. So if you come over here, Melody, you'll see different ports here. These ports are being used for internal, internal wiring, and we also have ports on the back of the machine, both on the Alera and on the Diamond. So a lot of our machines now will be internally wired, and you get rid of some of the, so right now, like on your Pro and your IS2K and your CLX, if you have a quilt imagine, you have a black box in the back. And as we probably have all come across, sometimes that black box can fall off. Sometimes the wires can get a little bit wobbly. You won't have that if you put your quilt imagine on the new Alera or the diamond or the flare. So it's much easier and it's much easier just to install any of the automation systems on the new machines as well. On the back of the machine, um, there is a small display. If you want to come around here quick, there is a small display. It's a 2.3 inch display. So you can do, this is independent of the front display. So you can do any of your changes, speed or your stitch modes from the back as well. If you're interested in the machine, want to know more information, give us a call. Call the office here, 319-378-0999 and ask for myself or send us the email, info at nolteam.com. We're here to answer your questions. We'd love to get you into an Alera, come in and test drive. And it'll be here for 4th or 4th of July for uh, July 13th for our open house too. So we'll have demos going on that week. Margaret is wondering, is there an upgrade to the new electronics for older machines? 
Um, as of right now, Margaret, we do not have a retrofit uh, package available since we've been engineering each individual machine. Um, so I can't, I don't want to promise anything out there, anything like that. The best thing to do right now is if you're very, if you're interested in it, is that you'd want to trade in, just trade your old machine in for the new machine. And Connie is also wondering if we could get a quick demo on the Alara with the feathers. Oh, sure. So I'm just going to... So there I've just got a spine on my head. So I'm going to come in and do that first two. So then I'm just going to kind of follow my spine, curve around to kind of bump a little up to there. Bump in, and this is where you'd normally do your bump back. So instead of doing that, just follow back and travel. I just did the kind of little loop. Well, what have I got? Again, come back to the spine, follow on the spine. Make your little loop. Follow back to the spine. Make your little loop. And then out. And if we wanted to add kind of our little extra right here, we can come back and do our little, add our little development. This one I'll do kind of a pointing spiral on the inside. Do that. I'll come back and we'll do like our little butterfly here. with our other feather and so then again this is adding the thread build up this is just a personal preference on if you like that or not then I'll come down to the other side your your feather on there so there's a lot of of neat designs you can do that get rid of that backtrack on the top of the feather you add a little more ornamentation so this does have the thread build up along the middle but i kind of like that look a little more modern a little more contemporary but you can certainly not backtrack along your spine if if that's the look you're going for she's going to do um a little session on oiling the bobbin area and on tension yeah so one of the things I know a lot of folks easy to struggle with is the tension. Um, so one of the things that I use that I have found invaluable is the toe bobbin gauge. Um, so I'm just going to pull out the bobbin case here. And we've got the gauge here. So for example, on my machine, and I tend to use pre-wound bobbins because they are, they do have a consistent tension on pretty much all of them. Um, so you put it in there, you lock it in place, and you pull it around, and you just pull that thread gently till that, and you gotta pull it with a steady pressure. So this is at about 150. And that's about what mine runs at too. So I know for pretty much a fact that if I have a pre-wound bobbin and I set my machine at 140 with that certain type of bobbin, I never have to mess with the bobbin tension after that. So then what I'll do, and what the guys here told me about this trick too. So you start running the machine with the bobbin at that tension and you just kind of keep cranking the top until you start to see the little loops on the top. And then you take that tension back about a quarter and then you're just about perfect and you're, you're not gonna have issues on the way. The key is again, to kind of figure out what your machine likes. I use generally two types of bobbin. One is the MagnaGlide that they get here. 
I set my machine at 140 with the magnet glide, and all I have to do is adjust the top. So that's a really good tension trick. One of the oil tricks that I learned in ambassador training this summer, which I didn't actually know, was the spot where you need to oil your bobbin. And I think the recommendation is to do this about every two bobbins. So take your needle, take your wheel, put your needle all the way down. So that's all the way down. We're going to get under here and hopefully see it. So there's a little opening right there when your needle is all the way down. Put about two drops of oil right there and then run it for a couple of minutes to run that oil through it. So that was a trick I learned this summer on how to do that. So needle all the way down and then kind of that little opening right in there. So that's one of those maintenance things. Easy to do. Easy to forget if you're not thinking about it. Connie is wondering, can the new long arms come with either M or L bobbin cases? Great question, Connie. The commercial machines are M bobbin, and the hobbyist quilters, such as the flare and the fun quilter, are the L bobbins. Well, thanks, Brenna, Bren for um, all your tips and tricks today. Sure. I want to talk a little bit about open house, just real quick. Open house is July 13th, and it's on a Saturday from 10 to 2 in our storefront, 1105 Hawkeye Drive in Hiawatha. This year, it's we have a lot of stuff going on. This is our first year that we actually have two teachers coming in from New York, and they are super excited to be here. We'll have Joyce that's always here, um, and that, that does a lot of our automation classes, and another teacher from New York, her name is Kim. Her bio is going to be on, on our website. She is coming to teach the free motion classes. So we will have free motion classes going on and automation classes going on this year. So it's going to be a week full of classes. Classes will be at our location in Hiawatha. And then we'll have some classes at the Legion Hall, which is a couple blocks away from us. Online, we'll make sure that we put where each class is at. So just pay attention to the location if you sign up for a class. Um, and then July 13th will happen. We'll have the open house here at the factory here. We'll have factory tours. We'll have demos. We'll have um, sales and promotions on accessories and notions. We'll have some refreshments and some snacks. And then we'll have demos on all our machines and on, on all our automation, um, automation uh, various automation things as well. And we'll have lots of people in here to help you. So you'll be able to come and um, have a fun day with us. It's always a fun week um, to see all our customers because we have customers that come from all over the United States. So it's always great to see everyone. Melody has been sending out emails on a daily basis so that people are aware of it. But once again, if you don't, if you're not getting the emails, let us know and we can get you on that list as well. Well, we're sitting here and we've got the Alara and the Diamond on the frame here. Yes. Looking at them and they look awfully similar. So what exactly are the differences between these two? Okay. So main difference between the two. Um, the Diamond here, as you can see, has a much bigger screen in the front. This has a 7-inch screen. The Alara has a 4.3-inch screen. So I'm going to go to this. If you look at the front page of both of them, if you can zoom in on this one, Melody, and zoom in on the diamond, the pages look exactly the same. Same stitch regulator, same stitch regulator on the Lara, same um, area to, for the spacing speed, resting it up and down measure. One big difference between the two of these is the low bobbin indicator. So the diamond comes with the low bobbin indicator which means you can preload your bobbins so that you can get a indication or notification when it's slow. For example, I'm just going to trick it so you can see here. If I say I only have 10 yards left in my bobbin, I have the bobbin, enable bobbin tracking on. I go over to my stitch. It's blinking red at me. So it's saying, hey, look up. As you're quilting, it's time to change your bobbin. In addition, if I was moving the machine, it's actually going to blink blue on your quilt. So it gives you an indication on your screen here, a screen in the back, your lighting here, and your lighting all throughout your throat area with that low bobbin indicator. Just gonna put this back here. The other thing is that there's a bobbin light. So as when we were in there, you could tell it was a little bit darker. And this one, Melody, if you look down there, there's actually a light down in the bobbin area. 
So it's much easier when you change your bobbins or if you need to do any kind of maintenance in your bobbin area. Lighting wise, the Lara has a dimmable lighting LED in the in the throat area and in the handles. Over here, you have the same. You have dimmable lighting, all different dimmable lighting. But a couple main differences is that you can actually quilt with black light on the diamond. There's spotlights. There's rear intensity. If you're a panographer, there's actually. Oops, I don't have it on right now, but there's there's lighting in the back there for the rear. And then you can actually make your temperature cooler or warmer. The Lara has LED, but no temperature on it. The Diamond has the temperature on it. The other main difference is the throw brake sensor. So the Diamond has a throw brake sensor. What And what that means is if the thread breaks and it's not going through the encoder here, what that means, or the wheel here, that it will start blinking purple at you through your throat here and up front. The other main thing are your adjustable handles. These adjust different ways in the front and in the back. Your Alara here, they adjust different ways this way. In the back, they're stationary. The other um, last difference is the back screen. This screen here is the 4.3 inch screen. So it's the same screen as the Alara but the Lara screen is smaller and it's not a touch screen, but you can still change everything with your thumb buttons. That is the main difference between the Lara and the diamond. Okay. Yeah. With the motion on the cruise, it's just so beautiful. I wanted to trade in my 24 Pro. I have a 14 inch commercial frame. What would I need to do to trade out this the only thing it's very easy um once again we made our models so that they're easy to be able to trade in and trade out the only thing that you have to do is change your encoder on your frame so the frame encoder and the encoder on the machine are different compared to the clx and the pro so that's the only thing you would have to do because both these machines come in a 24 inch pros are 24 inch you could use the same carriage you can use the same frame it's just the frame encoder that you have to change out. Will my ruler plate fit? Um, yes. For my 24 Pro. Yes. So your ruler plates will all be interchangeable between all the machines, unless you have something that is maybe 30 years old. When the older generation, 25, 30 years old, some of the bottoms were a little bit more narrower um, compared to where they're at now. So the, that ruler plate might not fit. But the ruler plates in the recent pros, the Alexis, IS2Ks should go right on to here. Same with feet. Feet can be interchangeably between not just the commercial machines, but also your fun quilter, your 16 inch commercial, your 18 inch commercial, your flare. All of our feet are interchangeably between all of our machines, no matter what, what they are in the product lineup. And what's the warranty on these? Warranty, body of the machine is lifetime, mechanical, five years, and electronics, one year. What automation can go on here? So automation, as I mentioned, we have the ports right here on the Lara and the Diamond and the Flare. And the automation, you can use IQ, you can use Quilt Imagine, and you can use um, the QBot. If you're going to go with, let's say you want to trade from a fun quilter or an 18-inch from that machine to like an Alara, you will have to have um, some different carriage rails and you will have to have some extra, some um, what we call L-arms on our frame, but you would want to put it on a commercial frame if you're gonna go from a much smaller machine to this machine, but you can use any of the automation systems on the commercial frame. Chris is wondering, she says, last she heard we're not doing 30 inch anymore. Is 30 inch still an option? 30 inch pros are still an option. So um, we still have the pros. We're still producing them. And um, they are produced in a 30-inch machine now. Okay, perfect. And no other questions right no now. No other questions? 
are the handles standard on front and back for both of these? Handles are not standard on the back of the Lyra. And the reason why I did that is because there's been a lot of people when I go to a show, talk to customers, that they ask, hey, I, I'm i doing my, I only want automation. I'm doing it for a business or um, my shoulders are sore and I want to get a new machine automation. So I'm not doing, I'm not doing free motion and hurting my shoulders or my wrist. And so we keep that as a add-on so that it doesn't give you additional costs that you're paying for and that you'll never use. So if you elect not to have the back handles, you would not have the back handles or the back screen because there's no point of having a back screen without back handles. Chris, you answer, your, yeah. answer your question? Okay. Chris is wondering if it's possible to get a Diamond Pro in the 30 inch. Not right now there isn't, Chris, unfortunately. We'd love to help you with the 24 inch. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have any questions on the 24 inch, we would love to help you on that. We can, we can answer any of your questions for you. Or give me a call and we could potentially talk about something else if you are really interested in a 30-inch diamond. And the reason why um, we really haven't come out with them, we very 30-inch uh, machines are just not, it's a big machine. And so there's an extremely limited amount of people that want a 30-inch machine. So we've concentrated on the 24-inch machines. But if it's something you're very interested in, give me a call, give me a shout out, and I can see what we can do for you. I think we talked about maintenance. Maintenance is the same as um, any of our other machines. It's all the, the four oil wicks every other um, and every other bobbin. As, as Bernie gave you some tips and tricks on oiling that bobbin area, super important to oil the bobbin area. Um, because that really helps and can impact the performance of your machine. Make sure you change your needles yes. regularly. Change, change your needles, needles every quilt. Every basically. quilt. We sell them here. You can buy them other places, but we sell them here. We have them in stock. We can ship them to you. You can stock, stop in. But um, that is going to that is going to give you a better performance mm -hmm. because it's going to have a cleaner needle as it's going through that fabric. And that can um, hurt your performance. And some people might think it's a machine. Really, it's the needle. Um, all that comes into um, impacts the performance of what your stitch is looking like, too. A couple other things I just want to bring up real quick. You know, when you're thinking about a new machine, if you're thinking about trading in or you haven't um, had a machine before and you're new to long arming or maybe you're going from the hobbyist quilter to the more of a business um, things to think about are what are your important things in your features that you want to see on your new machine? That will help you evaluate as you go through the product lineup that we have on what's super important to you, what you can live without, what you can't live without. Make a list. Make the pros and the cons and things that you want in your new machine. You know, when you're investing in this, you want to invest in it and have it last for a long time. So you want to get what you what you want to get. I would just say think about your budget and take into consideration if you are doing a business, um, it takes a lot less quilts to do a business than what you might think. And we have a lot of that information too. If you give us a call, I can help you understand this is how many quilts it would take to either have a business or to justify if you're sending them out to someone right now. Connie is wondering if you would say the diamond has significantly more features than the Alara, or if you think they kind of balance each other out. They have, once again, go back to your, you know, the features on what's important to you. To, in my opinion, they have significantly additional um, benefits or features on the diamond. Uh, but you all have to think about what's important to you. So for me, um, the low bobbin indicator, I think is it's, it's, works wonders, especially if people are doing pantographs or they are um, doing automation. It really, really helps. And one of the things I was talking to Brenna before we started here today, because she's looking at both of these, these machines as well, so she can evaluate which features and functions. And um, the layer is a great machine, but she's like, no, I want that, that low bobbin indicator. Um, so you really have to, in your, in your mind, Think about what's super important to you. If you're doing automation all the time, maybe the all the bells and whistles, maybe they're not as important to you and you want an awesome stitch regulator for your automation. The layer is going to do a, a great job for that too. And that's why we came out with this machine. Or if you're wanting to do just free motion, you're doing it for yourself, 
once again, though, Lyra will do a great job with that, with that as well. Some of the other things I wanted to point out as you're thinking about um, either buying a new machine or trading up or getting into it the first time, think about the support. No team, we're always here. We have our tech support here. We're built right in Iowa. We're still going to get going to continue building them here. So the, the factory is here and it's very supportive. We are growing our dealer base. We're growing our ambassador base, such as Brenna um, that is here. We had lots of people that came through our dealer and ambassador training in February. So we're getting more and more branches and hands and fingers out there in the United States to help everyone from a support support perspective, um, service perspective, and to be able to go to people's homes and demonstrate these machines as, as well. Um, and then I would say, lastly, you know, think about your quilting goals. Think about what you want to do. If you're a person that's quilting for charity, if you're a, quilt, a person that's quilting for yourself, think about the quilts that you love to make for your loved ones. Uh, these machines are going to be able to produce amazing quilts with or without automation. Free motion, as you can see, uh, very easy to move, um, uh, reactive, um, very reactive to the movement and the stitch regulator that that Brenna was using. You know, in the past, sometimes people would say, hey, just turn the regulator off because your machine will, will react a lot better in manual, which it does. Now, you can see with the new regulator on all our machines, you don't have to turn it off. You could be first timers and guys, still be able to use regulate. If you're used to using the stitch regulated mode, the, the cruise is amazing. <laughs> like it is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I cannot say how smoothly it moves. And for this small type work, for those right angles, like I'm doing a pantograph on my my 24 Pro right now that's that's got a ton of right angles and I'm having to do it in manual because it's got like all these little three quarter inch yeah. lines. This would handle that beautifully. And the so pro is still an awesome system. Pro, I yeah. love my pro. Yeah, I love my pro. I'm gonna. I'm probably keep it. And and it's a great, reliable, wonderful yep. machine. But if you're looking for an upgrade, the the cruise is absolutely yep. beautiful. Uh, give us a call. Send us an email. Info at nolteen.com. Our Facebook page. Call us three one nine three seven eight zero nine nine nine. We'd love to hear from you. And in addition, um, as I mentioned, our open house out there. And we are planning on doing these live events on a monthly basis. So if there's ideas or things that you want to hear from us or things like Brennan did today on tips and tricks, send them our way. Um, we want to hear from our customers because we want to provide you the information that you're looking for to help your quilting experience uh, be better on a, on a daily basis and to improve on a daily basis as well. And thank you, Brenna. Thank you for joining us today. Happy to be here. Thank you, Melody, for doing our videos and helping with everything today as well and organizing everything. Absolutely. And Hadley that's out there in social media that is will be helping with everyone as well. Thank you. <laughs>